Magnesium is one of those supplements almost every longevity expert and doctor recommends. I do think magnesium is important mm. in there as well. Again, about 40% of the U.S. population doesn't get enough magnesium. It's an essential mineral we're supposed to be getting from our diet. Magnesium is is a cofactor in at least 300 enzymatic systems in the body. It's considered to be beneficial for stress, inflammation, sleep, and metabolic health. I call magnesium the master mineral because it's involved with hundreds of different processes inside a body, and it's a cofactor for many other vitamins and minerals. However, a recent study from the journal Nutrients also highlighted how magnesium sits at the center of all the hallmarks of aging. In this video, I'm going to go through the study and reveal the central role of magnesium in aging and longevity. I'm also going to tell you how to ensure adequate magnesium status and how to get it from food. Magnesium is needed for many essential functions in the body, such as energy production, DNA repair, neurotransmitters, glucose regulation, electrolyte balance, heart function, endothelial function, normal blood pressure, and much more. A deficiency in magnesium increases the risk of many chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, and neurodegeneration. Being deficient in magnesium can have one of the worst negative side effects on your health out of all the other minerals. Unfortunately, about 50% of people don't get adequate amounts of magnesium. The recent 2024 paper in the journal Nutrients highlighted how magnesium also is at the center of all the hallmarks of aging and how magnesium deficiency can contribute to accelerated aging and increased risk of mortality. What's more, magnesium deficiency is very common in old age. But first, what are the hallmarks of aging? The hallmarks of aging is a very influential concept that was introduced in 2013 by Lopez, Otin and colleagues. They're essentially some of the main characteristic features of aging. In 2013, there were a total of 9 hallmarks of aging, but as of 2023, there's a total of 12. They are... Genomic instability, which refers to DNA damage and mutations. Telomere attrition, which describes shortening of telomeres that protect your chromosomes and DNA. Epigenetic alterations, which are changes in gene expression that favor activation of bad genes. Loss of proteostasis and accumulation of inflammatory proteins and debris. Disabled macroautophagy, the accumulation of just junk material inside cells. Deregulated nutrient sensing, which refers to impaired metabolic function. Mitochondrial dysfunction, or impaired energy production and increased inflammation. Cellular senescence, which are cells turning metabolically inactive but inflammatorily active. Stem cell exhaustion, the depletion of stem cells that can become any other type of cell. Altered intracellular communication, which is the miscommunication and impaired signaling between cell components. Chronic inflammation, continuous low-grade inflammatory state and dysbiosis, an imbalanced gut microbiome. All of these hallmarks of aging interact with each other and they contribute to each other's pathology. For example, chronic inflammation promotes cellular senescence, and cellular senescence causes chronic inflammation. Disabled macrotophagy promotes mitochondrial dysfunction, and mitochondrial dysfunction leads to chronic inflammation. As the 2024 Nutrients paper described, magnesium deficiency promotes all of these hallmarks of aging, which then promotes the development of age-related comorbidities and ultimately multimorbidity, or multiple comorbidities and chronic diseases. Low magnesium is involved in genomic instability and DNA damage, which increase the susceptibility of other hallmarks of aging to worsen. All the hallmarks of aging involve aspects of DNA damage and inflammation. One of the main hallmarks of aging affected by magnesium deficiency is chronic inflammation. Aging is characterized by an increase in baseline inflammation, which is called inflammaging, or age-related chronic low-grade inflammation. A magnesium deficiency promotes the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and free radicals that exacerbate this process. Magnesium is needed to maintain an optimal redox balance and antioxidant defense. So, maintaining an optimal magnesium status can help to mitigate this inflammaging process. Low magnesium levels are associated with low-grade systemic inflammation. There's an inverse association between magnesium status and inflammatory markers. Low magnesium increases inflammation and normalizing magnesium reduces inflammation. Even looking beyond the hallmarks of aging, magnesium deficiency is involved with many other chronic diseases as well. You need magnesium for insulin production, which then helps to keep your blood sugar more stable. And this signaling also supports protein synthesis, gene expression, DNA synthesis, and glucose uptake into cells. Magnesium deficiency has a major consequence on cardiovascular health. It promotes high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, thrombosis, inflammation, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, arrhythmias, and endothelial dysfunction, all of which promote cardiovascular disease. Magnesium intake is inversely associated with coronary artery calcification. The lower the self-reported magnesium intake, the greater the odds of coronary artery calcification. So not only does magnesium deficiency accelerate the development of hallmarks of aging, but a magnesium deficiency also increases the risk of many chronic diseases. These chronic diseases are what kill people. 
Heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide and it kills about 30% of people. I hope you're now aware of the importance of magnesium and the consequences of not getting enough of it. So how much magnesium do we need and how do we get it? The RDA is 350 to 420 milligrams a day, which about 50% of people don't meet. In some cases, 400 to 600 milligrams a day might be more optimal. Getting 399 milligrams a day is enough to maintain a positive magnesium balance on a 2000 calorie diet, but getting around 100 milligrams is inadequate. There are also some situations that increase the demand for magnesium, such as stress, sleep deprivation, insulin resistance, sweating or exercising a lot, malabsorption and gut issues, drinking a lot of coffee and tea, oxidative stress and inflammation, and excess phosphorus intake from meat, dairy, and carbonated sodas. They all increase the demand for magnesium, and in that case, getting the RDA of 420 mg isn't enough in this situation. Magnesium can be found most in nuts, seeds, leafy greens, fish, tubers, seafood, beans, and in smaller amounts in dairy, grains, and meat. The top six foods for magnesium include pumpkin seeds, 156 mg per 1 ounce or 28 grams, almonds, 80 mg per 1 ounce, spinach, 78 mg per half a cup, black beans, 60 mg per half a cup, potatoes, 43 mg per 3.5 cups, and salmon, 26 mg per 3 ounces or 85 grams. You can also get magnesium from mineral waters, which is one of the most bioavailable form of getting magnesium. Mineral water intake lowers blood pressure, especially in subjects with low urinary magnesium and calcium levels. Unfortunately, the magnesium content of vegetables between 1940 and 1999 has decreased by 24%, in fruit by 17%, in meat by 15%, and in cheese by 26%. That's mostly due to soil erosion, pesticides, food processing, etc. This is one of the biggest reasons why magnesium deficiency is so common. Our food contains a lot less magnesium than 100 years ago. It's hard to get magnesium from foods because not a lot of foods have significant amounts of magnesium. Number three, many people suffer from chronic conditions that increase the demand for magnesium. And number four, the recommended intake for many people is above the RDA of 420 because of those same conditions. How do you know if you're deficient in magnesium and you need more? One of the most reliable ways to assess your magnesium status is to look at your red blood cell magnesium levels. A normal range for that is 1.8 to 3.5 millimoles per liter. If you're within a normal magnesium level, then you don't really need to supplement any magnesium, as long as you're eating the foods and drinking the waters that contain magnesium. However, even people with normal magnesium levels might still benefit from some extra magnesium, especially in terms of sleep, stress, and relaxation. There are many different types of magnesium supplements, magnesium sulfate, bisglycinate, taurate, threonate, etc. I'm not going to go into all of the details with these supplements. However, I can give you a table based on the research from my book with Dr. James Antonio called The Mineral Fix. You can see from the table in green if a particular type of magnesium supplement is good for that function or not. Red is negative and yellow is uncertain or neutral. The top three best magnesium forms are glycinate, because it's the safest and cheapest and it has glycine, threonate, because it's the most bioavailable form for the brain, and taurate, because it's safe and effective for the cardiovascular system. I know a lot of people will also ask which type of magnesium am I taking. Well, I like to combine different types of magnesium. The brand of magnesium I'm taking, Nordcode, has six different types of magnesium, which improves its health benefits throughout the body. Use the code SCENE10 for 10% off on the Nordcode MAG6 at livehealthy.com forward slash collections forward slash Nordcode with two O's. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.